Hey everybody, it's June 25th, it's 10 a.m. here in Houston, it's very hot. We have a hurricane or a tropical storm out in the Gulf, which means that all of our typical sort of summer weather has been stolen. Um, still, it's better than us getting a hurricane. Such as living on the Gulf Coast here in the United States. I'm going to talk about CSS and what it is and what it isn't and some things that will kind of get you going on how to use CSS. So I have here in my text editor the content from the images.css file, the cascading style sheet that I wrote to go along with the uh, applying CSS to the images HTML. So that assignment. And I want to talk a little bit about what CSS is meant to do. So you'll notice, first of all, that the stuff in this file is not HTML. CSS is meant to go with HTML, but it's a separate language altogether. CSS is not HTML. It's also not C++ or PHP or it's not a programming language. It's essentially a very uh, particular set of rules that really only work with HTML. So they kind of go together. Cascading style sheets or CSS means that you're going to apply rules to your HTML on how they look, on how they lay out on the page, and how they interact with one another. So basically it's taking HTML and being very specific. You're changing individual attributes. So let's get started. First of all, we've got a chunk of code here at the top which comes from Eric Meyer writing a set of rules that lets HTML5 and CSS3 work with new browsers. I mean, work with older browsers. So um, you'll see some version of this code. Notice on lines 3 all the way down to line 12 here. You'll notice some version of this kind of stuff on many, many CS3 files until everybody's browser is the latest and greatest version of Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, uh, Chrome, uh, all those kinds of things. Until you've got the latest and greatest browser running on all your devices, some browsers may not understand HTML5 or CSS3. So this guy wrote a chunk of code that you can put in a CSS file that basically lets older browsers at least vaguely know what you're talking about when you refer to the article tag, which didn't exist before HTML5. And so as a matter of fact, all of these tags here are specific to HTML5. So that's what that stuff is. So you'll notice that I put that in mine and you'll see it in a lot of new files. Anytime you come across a CSS3 file, at least for the next year or two probably, you'll see some version of Eric Meyer's uh, CSS reset. And notice I left the uh, all the information in there because even though it's public domain, I want people to know where I got it so they can go and use it themselves. Then I want to talk about comments. Notice on line 8, there's a slash star and then all the way at the end of that is a star slash. That's a comment. That's meant for a human to read. The browser ignores it altogether. The comments are there so that another designer can come to my CSS file and see how I've laid it out. So you'll see that at the top I've got the CSS reset, then I've got some stuff that applies to the body, which means the entire browser window basically. So anything inside the body tag is going to have this particular color will be this particular font and will this have will have this padding just at the bottom. And then down here there's another comment for content and then even though there was more to it I actually took one of the ones from the text and altered it some but I wanted the format to be the same so that as you read through the text you'll see that this one matches the others. Anyway, so anything inside the section tag is going to have these effects. Anything inside the article tag will have these effects. Anything, anything inside H2 is going to have those effects. Anything inside figure has those. Image, fig caption. So basically I picked some of the tags in my HTML. Some of them were um, uh, specific to layout and some of them were specific to like the way it's going to look and feel. Um, and I've mixed them together. So the sections in my HTML will have these effects and the, let's go down to one of these and the image tag will have those. So they kind of, you can both do layout and the look and feel. And sometimes you can even mix them together. So let's talk about uh, selectors here. So there's no easy way to learn CSS without simply digging in. You're going to need a really good resource, which is one of the reasons why I picked the book I did. You'll notice there are three chapters in the uh, book specifically for CSS. 
There's one about working with files, one about the layout and design, one about individual selectors, which is probably your go-to uh, resource when you're like, how do I change the color? How do I set the font? How do I change? What's the difference between the margin and the padding? That kind of thing. That's why I picked that particular book. You'll notice that my text editor syntax highlighted the CSS so that the selectors show up in blue and then colon, the value they're going to be shows up in black. Okay, so the color is going to be this hexadecimal color. Um, and I'll talk about uh, hexadecimal colors just a little bit. There is uh, something to go along with those crazy numbers. They actually mean something. So notice that inside this big box, it's sort of a blue color, and there's a kind of a gray color in the background there. And then there's a uh, vaguely almost white color in the background. That's what all of these different weird things mean, uh, these hexadecimal numbers. Th these groups of six letters and, and numbers represent how much red, which the first two is how much of, a, of red you're going to have, the second one's how much green, and the third one's how much blue, okay? And you can, if you want, go through the hexadecimal like a computer scientist, but more often than not, you simply get the color codes from a text editor, I mean a, a graphics editor like Photoshop or from the web, um, something like that. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about those when I talk about images. Um, and I'm also not going to spend a lot of time talking about individual selectors and their values because you're going to need to get those from the book. But I do want to point out some things like here's this one big long line sets the font for my entire body. It's 100% of its size. So you can actually change the size down by percentages. You can also do it by um, uh, individual numerical values like uh, 8 point or 12 point, but you need to make sure that whatever point value matches the uh, font's capabilities. By using percentages, it's going to simply scale it down. Then I've got exactly the name of the font I'm going to use. In this case, Arial Black. Notice it has to be inside double quotes, and the font name has to match exactly the name of the font or it won't load. That's where the commas come in, by the way. If for some reason I don't have, or the person looking at my web page does not have Arial Black on their computer already, because the browser may know this font or it may not. If it doesn't, then the CSS rules say, well, let's go to the next one. Do they have a font called Arial? Notice it's not in double quotes because it's a generic font. And if for some reason they are using a, a computer that doesn't know Arial, they pick the standard, the sans serif, which means no little stuff on the individual letters, just round it off. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. That's enough about that. Um, let's talk about the padding versus margins. You can determine, notice here we've got this blue box where it says Transit of Venus. You can have both a margin, which is the room in between, say, this border and the next thing up, or you can have padding. Padding represents how much space there is between the border and the stuff inside it. So padding is how much room stuff has inside of something like a box like this, whereas a margin is how much room the box has with the stuff above and below it. So I know that's kind of particular, but there is a difference between margin and padding. Margin makes the box stand out, padding makes the content of the box stand out. So, and uh, PX, by the way, is pixels. You'll also notice that each of the rules here has to end with a semicolon. If you don't end it with a semicolon, the browser may not actually know what it is. CSS is far more particular than HTML. And then just in general, whenever you're changing a particular HTML tag like body, you've got to put a set of curly braces. So notice there's an opening curly brace there and a closing one there. You can, if you want, put the curly brace on its own line. Um, it, is a matter of style really, but you do have to have an opening curly brace and a closing. Unlike HTML where you can mess up the tags and the browser still knows what you mean, individual pieces of CSS have to be exact. The spaces matter like right there. The semicolon matters like right there. The font has to be in double quotes spelled correctly and capitalized the same way like right here. So it's very particular. So you need to read the chapters, the three chapters on CSS. I'm not expecting you in any of our assignments to write CSS. I'm expecting you to take CSS that's been written and apply it, which is far more common. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing and then we're going to stop because I'm already talking too long. The other thing I want to point out is that generally what you're going to do is you're going to take a CSS file that someone else has written like I did 
and apply it into your HTML, which means that your tags like article, figure, h1, and fig caption, they have to match what the CSS is looking for. So in my CSS over here, I, I'm changing the body tag, which of course I'm going to have, but like there's section and article in H2. This is actually something I was using for another page. But any of the tags that have been listed in my CSS will show a different effect in my HTML than they normally would. So just by using article, it's going to use the rule from my CSS. Just by using an H1 or an H2, it's going to use the rule from my CSS. Just by using the figure tag, it's going to use the rule from my CSS. And how does the browser know where to get the rules? That's where this part comes in. Link, rel equals style sheet, href equals. So the browser actually goes and gets this set of rules, and then before it ever shows you the web page, it's going to apply the look and feel to all the different tags you have. So that's why this thing looks the way it does. Okay, I'm going to do some more with this, but we'll do it in parts.